Hi friends, welcome back to Mule 4 series of learning videos. I am Sivatan Kamani, I am an integration technical architect. So we have seen a few videos uh, talking about data weave. And in this video, I am going to present to you some tips and tricks of data weave with some unique benefits. Many times we are in a situation where uh, we need to process the incoming data, particularly a big chunk of data that's coming through uh, input file or input JSON. Uh, in order to process that, you might need some additional data, uh, especially these are metadata or configuration data that you might need to use and combine uh, with these uh, uh, incoming JSON or in, uh, incoming data in order to arrive at some decisions. So more often these uh, metadata are repeatedly used throughout the project in many places. So uh, sometimes we are struck with uh, uh, no option other than reading every time from the data file um, which might result into unnecessary error while reading from the database. So we can avoid these by using some special techniques uh, uh, followed in this data view. So we are going to take uh, and configure uh, these data in a JSON file rather than taking it from the database. And finally we will see a sample use case. Uh, to combine all these features uh, in a single data weave so that uh, you can understand better and you can try to apply it in your own projects. Let's get started. So I have prepared a, a Mule 4 project um, with a flow which is already here and I have introduced uh, one HTTP listener and the data weave to demonstrate uh, uh, these benefits. So um, let's start with the configuration data. What is the configuration data and why do we need it? Let's take an example. So I have uh, uh, some configurations that's often referred uh, from the database every time. For example, uh, currency and which are, these are project specific data uh, that uh, you might need to take it uh, from database or from somewhere before you apply functionalities or uh, some processing logic for, from the incoming data uh, like currency, department, uh, state or eligible stores. So these are applicable for your project specific use case. So we have defined the config.json and this is what we are going to use in our project in multiple places. So while you are using multiple places, you should avoid taking it from a database or taking it repeatedly from the file. In order to avoid that, we are going to take these data under a variable uh, as a JSON and then we are going to retrieve the data from that variable instead of taking every time from this JSON. So how do we do it? In a Mule 4 flow, we have a HTTP listener and the data view. And uh, we have introduced a variable uh, in order to retrieve the content of this config.json under a variable. How do we do that? So I have a, a resource file taken as a string. Uh, whose uh, mime taped uh, data is uh, JSON type. So uh, for that we are using immunit tools. This is very simple. By using immunit tools, uh, you can take the resource. Uh, so we are not talking about immunit here, but uh, you can use immunit tool uh, to resolve this purpose uh, to take uh, content of the file, which is paste, placed in the resource path into a variable. So uh, we are using a get resource as string function and we are going to specify the uh, file name. This config.json is placed under the resources folder. So uh, by default uh, when you get the resource uh, it considers and treats the resource content available under the resources folder. So you need to ensure that you are placing it under resources folder and you need to give that file name here. So it loads the content of the data with the specified mime type and it stores under the variable called configuration. Now let's take a look at the data view. Let's click on it, maximize it. So I have uh, published my previous video talking about uh, uh, individual features and how to identify and get the help about these individual features available in data view. So you can please refer my previous video, which is a short video. You can quickly go through that and come back here. So which will be helpful to you. I will put the link down below in the description. So in this data view, first we are going to take some uh, metadata, which is our project related configuration data 
under uh, these variables. So these are already available under uh, uh, variable called configuration. So you can retrieve individual uh, components of that particular data or which is a subset of uh, configuration data into uh, some simple variables within the data weave. So in this variable, we have stored the entire data under configuration, which is a variable, which you can retrieve uh, by using vars. So you can say a currency uh, equal to wars dot configuration dot currency, which will fetch the uh, currency as a variable here. Let's take a look at what is the currency. So currency is the JSON uh, sub JSON content, uh, which you can uh, load it into um, currency. And in the same way, we have loaded department and state. So we will be doing uh, some uh, combination of uh, data weave features uh, uh, here. So what, do, what are we doing here? So there are two things I want you to note. Uh, so sometimes we can uh, customize our configuration and put it as a type here so that you don't need to elaborate every time when you are uh, typecasting the data from one to another. For example, I have defined uh, uh, two data types for your better understanding purpose. And uh, the first one is uh, my date time and another one is US date format and uh, the third one is India date format. So uh, this is purposely uh, done this way for you to understand how we can um, configure and customize this data type that can be repeatedly used within the data view. So, um, so this is the data type format and this is the configuration data that are loaded. And uh, as I explained in my previous video, I have also imported uh, a few modules that, that I want to use it within the data weave so that you can combine the power of uh, data weave uh, functions as well as uh, Java utilities. So you can bring the entire uh, uh, power of Java and data weave under single functionality and transformation. So um, I have taken a time by using now. So we are uh, uh, converting the current timestamp into US date format. And uh, uh, next one I have uh, improvised uh, in particular to again uh, to demonstrate you how this can be or how the features or how different features can be combined together. So uh, I have combined if with uh, these uh, customized time format which is taken based on the incoming data. For example, I am deciding the time format based on the country that's coming. If it is USA, I am applying as US date format. Else, I am following India date format. So this, this is very concise and easily readable. So that's the power of combining multiple features into one. So uh, when any third party or other team member looks at this code, this is very concise. So the second one is uh, uh, we are loading a currency uh, based on the incoming data. So we are uh, taking the data from the payload and based on the country, we are choosing this currency. And in the same way, uh, we are taking the department uh, value based on the, because here the department is configured. Uh, this uh, doesn't need to be necessarily department. You can use it uh, as per your project use case. So from the set of key value pairs, uh, we are going to choose one based on the incoming data. That's what I have done here. So we are choosing department based on the incoming department ID. And uh, finally, I have a unique use case uh, that you want to convert uh, uh, the given data into an array. Uh, so, for example, I have used this uh, uh, input JSON. In particular, I have store pickup preferences. So, imagine that you are working on an e-commerce project where there could be a scenario of uh, user's preference on the store pickup that's coming as the input preferences, which is a comma separated value. You can split this and then take it as a value by means of uh, delimited list to string array under string utils functions. So I'm using um, Spring Frameworks uh, string utils, which is uh, containing so many functions which you can explore. So uh, we are retrieving this as an array, which will automatically uh, 
separate it out as an array based on this delimiter comma that's what we have done here so the input data contains chicago comma san francisco comma new york so which can be uh, extracted into an array under the stores and then you also want to find out uh, how many uh, stores are preferred uh, by using this uh, size of and combine this and finally i have an example uh, which i like the most so you want to find out and retrieve the um, common elements say for example the use case here is uh, we have certain eligible stores uh, uh, that's available for pickup uh, which is configured and the user has some preferences so you want to find out uh, how many preferences match which is basically to find out the common elements between two arrays but you may know uh, finding the common elements is uh, a big iterative function which you need to do but i have tried to simplify by using one line uh, you can see here so uh, first i have found out uh, uh, the difference the uh, content of a but not in content of b so which will basically find out the difference between first array and second array but here ironically we want to find out the uh, uh, contrast way of doing the uh, common elements so common elements can be found out uh, um the differences can be subtracted from the original array which will give us uh, uh, common elements which is like a minus a minus b so you can try to understand and put it as an example you can retrieve the common elements easily so let's run this so i have the result here um so in particular you can see currency is picked up as a dollar uh, based on the country so the dollar is coming from the configuration data and here department uh, computer science is coming based on the uh, department id given here so that is also coming based on the configuration data and stores are uh, uh, the incoming data which we have separated out by using comma into an array for our processing purpose so you can understand easily here this is transferred as an array and also we are counting uh, the number of uh, elements in the array within this uh, a string which is comma separated value there are three stores and then you want to find out uh, how many stores are preferred by users based on the ones that are available with us so we can go back and find out what are the legally available stores which is chicago san francisco and seattle and here this is chicago san francisco and new york and eligible store count is chicago and let's give uh, i am i have given a spelling mistake here so i want to give c now it should be 2 so i have given extra space here so now you see there are two value coming out uh, from here so uh, that's it uh, in this video this video uh, is a short video explaining uh, the uh, powerful combinations of available features uh, and to have uh, less line uh, but it's more concise and more readable Uh, to understand better that's all in today's video hope you liked it and uh, got benefited out of this video so if so please uh, like my video and uh, subscribe my channel so that i can come back with useful topics uh, in the future so again thanks for watching bye